So hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucy and in today's video I am filming a beginner's guide to historical fiction. So if you are new to my channel you may not know historical fiction is probably one of my favourite genres. I would say apart from fantasy historical fiction is my favourite genre especially when it kind of blends in with other genres and you know basically anything that's set in the past will always capture my attention so I'm delighted to be sharing with you a beginner's guide to the genre featuring my favourite kind of tropes and trends within the genre and also kind of a brief explanation about what constitutes as historical fiction followed by some key book recommendations that I think you all should check out. So before we get started, I'm delighted to say I'm partnering with the History Quill Book Club to advertise their services to historical fiction readers. So the History Quill Book Club is a book discovery service that helps connect readers with their next historical fiction read. Basically, they suggest books to you so you don't spend hours searching for your next favourite book. And the best thing about it is it's completely free. All you have to do is tell them your reading preferences and sign up with your email address and they'll send you historical fiction book recommendations recommendations that suit your reading interests. They also run regular book giveaways so there's always options to win new books. Right now they are running a giveaway for Viking historical fiction which honestly sounds so up my street and they also have a bunch of other great giveaways coming up. I have left all links for the History Quill book club down in the description bar below so please do check them out if you're looking for your next historical fiction read. And thank you to the History Quill for kindly reaching out to me and offering to sponsor this segment. So we are are kicking off with what is historical fiction. So I'm sure if you're coming to this video you either are already a fan of historical fiction or you are completely new to the genre and need a kind of refresher on what the genre encompasses. So if you've never read it before basically historical fiction is a literary genre where basically the plot takes place in the past. It's as simple as that. A key part of historical fiction however is that it pays attention to the social climate at the time, the political climate at the time, the kind of mannerisms and the kind of traditions that people in that time period would have adhered to. Very helpfully that was when my memory card malfunctioned and I have lost a little clip of this video so hence why the lighting's a bit different. My hair is several inches shorter but I am wearing the same dress. You gotta keep some things consistent. Anyway, as I was saying, an important thing to know about historical fiction is that it is fiction and I think a lot of kind of criticism comes towards the genre when people expect that the things that happen in the books are to be actual historical fact. The point of historical fiction is to fill in the gaps of history, to give characters in history, to give famous people in history a voice and perhaps shine a light on people who you know we haven't really heard much about or to tell a different side of their story. So a lot of the dialogue, a lot of the actions and a lot of the day-to-day -day scenes in historical fiction are just that, they are fiction because that is what distinguishes this genre from pure history. You know, there is artistic license, there is, you know, an author just taking liberties and using their imagination to think, you know, what might this person in history might have said? What might have happened in this like great battle that we don't know about? And they do try to fill in the gaps and that is what I love about historical fiction. It's always good to take it with a little bit of salt because of course there's no way of knowing what Anne Boleyn said hundreds of years ago, you know, but we can let our imaginations roam and that is what makes historical fiction such an entertaining genre. So what constitutes a historical novel? By this I mean what makes a book a historical fiction novel in terms of time period? How far back do we have to go for it to be a historical fiction book? So it is kind of debated, the historical novel societies say at least 50 years in the past. So the author has to have written about an event or a time period 50 years before. However, critic Sarah Johnson says that historical fiction is any novel written before the middle of the last century, which of course in our case would be the 20th century, so anything written kind of before the middle of that century would be historical fiction. One example of this, which I think is really interesting, is 
you know, writers from the past who were writing as contemporaries. So for example, Jane Austen, we wouldn't consider her novels historical fiction because she was writing those novels as a contemporary living in that time period. So you often have to kind of remember that, like how far in the future is the author writing in about these events in the past? And that is usually what constitutes historical fiction. So let's move on to the key tropes and themes. As I did say earlier on that I wanted to kind of explore this and touch on this part of the genre. So one thing about historical fiction that I really love is that it is just so like wide ranging and very, very broad, which means there aren't particular tropes, say as in Regency romance, where there are definitely kind of a set of rules almost that most novels stick to. There is a format. The same as a thriller book, for example, you want to get to a twist, you want a lot of build up. But because historical fiction is an overarching umbrella term for a lot of different subgenres, there aren't kind of key tropes that each novel might play into. However, there are many subgenres which I did want to talk about as well. So some are historical mystery, which is like the Shard Lake series by CJ Samson. That's a very, very popular historical mystery set during the dissolution of the monasteries. There is historical romance, which is my personal favorite subgenre. You know, Regency romance kind of feeds into this as well. So historical romance is a big, big kind of part of the historical fiction genre. There's also family sagas, like multi-generational historical family sagas, nautical fiction, which I admit I have not read a lot about, but I do love a historical kind of pirate themed or naval themed book, I must say. And then of course, historical fantasy, which is a big big part of the genre and there are many books that use a historical setting for their basis and are deeply rooted in a time period for example 15th century Brittany maybe but there is a fantastical element to the plot maybe there's magic involved maybe there are different creatures maybe it's just a lot more fantasy and they're kind of using the historical setting as a basis to kind of add the fantasy elements on top of. So I love historical fantasy. I might have to do a separate video all about historical fantasy just because I love it so much. So let me know if you have any recommendations for these subgenres down in the comments below. I also wanted to make a caveat about historical fiction that a lot of historical fiction that I have read and that sadly is so, so popular is all Western inspired historical fiction. It is usually based in Europe or America. And I would love to see some historical fiction set in different countries written by non-American or non-British writers. So please do leave any recommendations you have in the comments below. I do think it's a very Western, very white genre. And I would love to kind of read more diversely in this area and just really kind of read historical fiction from a load of different cultures and countries. So hit me up down in the comments below. So it's time for the book recommendations. I know you've all been waiting for this bit. It's my favorite bit to talk about, to be honest. So we are going to go through our time. We are going to start with the ancient era and work our way through to the industrial era. So I will give you recommendations for each time period and let me know if I've missed any in the comments below. So first off, we are gonna talk about the ancient era. So I wanna talk about something because the ancient era is defined as anything up to 500 AD. I believe that's definitely the time period I'll be covering with these book recommendations. So I have really struggled to find a lot of historical fiction based in this time period. And my first recommendation comes with a caveat. That is that historical fiction sometimes includes mythology and mythology retellings, which is definitely what this first recommendation is. So it's The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I'm sure you are all fed up of me talking about this book. I absolutely adore it. It retells the story of Achilles from the Greek myth and his lover Patroclus. However, I obviously realise that mythology is not historical fact. You know, mythology is fiction. It is stories that's been passed down and written about and created. And obviously this book is inspired by those myths. However, I did want to shout out the fact that this book is very rooted in historical 
fact in the sense of the settings of ancient Greece and antiquity and you just feel like you are there and that's why I wanted to recommend this one quickly just to say if you want something that's not strictly historical fiction but is in a historical ancient Greek setting please read Madeline Miller's books The Song of Achilles and Circe are just magical magical books that will take you to another time period completely this is escapism in its purest form, so I wanted to just shout this out. Next up, I wanted to shout out something that is also annoyingly not quite in the ancient era. It is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. So this actually takes place in 535 AD. So we are just missing out on, you know, the ancient era, which obviously I'm including up to 500 AD. So bear with me on this one, but I do think this fits in terms of the feeling of being in the ancient era. So this is inspired by an ancient folk song, this book, and it is about three sisters who each have magical abilities. And this novel takes place just after the fall of the Roman Empire in Britain. We are still in ancient Britain and this book is honestly magical. It is, you know, very sensory, so you feel like you are there. And of course, there is a magical element to it, which I did explain. This does fall under historical fantasy. And honestly, I really would recommend Sister Song. I'm sure you've heard about it already. But if you want something set in ancient Britain, just after the fall of the Roman Empire, it is mega dramatic. It features treachery love the bond of sisters and is very very magical as well so i really would recommend sister song and finally in this time period i wanted to recommend the wolf den by elodie harper so i have not read this book just a caveat i have not read this book yet but i'm desperate to and i will be reading it very soon but i just wanted to shout this one out this is set in Pompeii in I believe the Roman times and this is actually the first book in a trilogy that explores the lives of women whose you know stories have been overlooked throughout history so I think this sounds incredible and you will hear in this video a lot of recommendations about women's stories who haven't been told which I think historical fiction is doing really well of doing at the minute so The Wolf Den for some Roman esque goodness this is quite a dark subject matter obviously it follows a slave girl who has been sold into slavery and she is forced to work at this brothel and she's forced to hide her talents and basically bide her time in order to escape and basically just find her freedom whilst researching books to include for the kind of ancient history section I also came up with an author called Mary Reno, who writes a lot of ancient Greek historical fiction. I think her most popular series centres around Alexander the Great. So if you were intrigued about kind of reading more in this time period, I would definitely look her up. And I think, I haven't read her before, but I think I will after this video because it sounds great. She sounds like she writes really great books they're very well reviewed on goodreads and do let me know if you have any recommendations down in the comments below so okay so we are swiftly moving into the middle ages so from 500 a.d to 1500 so i have quite a lot of book recommendations for this section as this is more my area like plantagenet england especially is my key area of history that i just love i find it really fascinating anything to do with the Wars of the Roses are my jam. So let's get cracking on some books I would like to recommend. First up is probably one of the most famous historical fiction authors, Philippa Gregory, who predominantly writes about the women of medieval Europe and, you know, the dynasties around that. So first I want to recommend the Cousins War series. I'm currently holding up The Kingmaker's Daughter, which is one of the last books in the kind of chronology of the Cousins War series. This features on Anne Neville and Richard III. So this is my favourite book in the series because of Richard III. I am a big Ricardian. I am a big fan of Richard III and Anne Neville's story. So I particularly love this. But basically the Cousins War series starts with Edward IV who defeats Henry VI and assumes his throne and that basically establishes the York dynasty on the throne of England and the Wars of the Roses obviously are between the houses of York and Lancaster and that kind of battle throughout the years with a different kind of monarch on the throne each time so I would really recommend the Cousins War series if you want something very dramatic 
very kind of full of plot twists and turns but also the kind of like events that happen in this series are just some of my kind of favorites in terms of the time period so i really would recommend that and i really love philippa gregory's historical fiction novels i think she is a brilliant writer and really makes you care for these women who a lot of the times are completely overlooked so the next book i would like to recommend is con Igledon's wars of the roses this is the first book in the series called stormbird so this starts a bit earlier in terms of the middle ages this book is focused on henry v who is a very very famous figure he obviously was in the battle of agincourt and this book explores the lives of henry v and his son henry vi and what happens when henry v basically dies he is the great lion of england winner of all the wars and as we know henry the sixth is basically not that powerful compared to his father who basically had this legacy of winning the wars with france so this book definitely centers around the kind of court intrigues and the dynastic power struggles of the wars of the roses this whole series really explores that back and forth just like philippa gregory's does the main point of difference is this kind of focuses on the men in the picture it focuses on the kings whilst philippa gregory's definitely focus more on the women and the wives who are plotting behind the scenes so there are kind of two different stories here i would check them both out if you're interested in plantagenet's history another book i really wanted to recommend which isn't one i've read yet but one that is on my tbr i really wanted to mention this as i felt it was important to bring a non-western recommendation this is she who became the sun I don't know whether to classify this as historical fantasy as this is a queer reimagining of the start of the Ming dynasty. So it begins in 1345 and it's basically about what if a poor second daughter basically rose to become the emperor of China. So I've been hearing non-stop incredible praise about this book. I just think it sounds brilliant and this book actually isn't out until the 22nd of July so please do give it a pre-order make sure you look out for it I for sure will be reading this very soon because I think any book that is like a reimagining works for me and the fact that it's set at the start of the Ming dynasty I don't really know much about that and the 1300s isn't really my time period I'm really excited to read this kind of historical fantasy which I've just been hearing incredible things about and I quickly wanted to mention other authors in this time period who I haven't read yet and I don't own copies of, but they are the most kind of famous in this time period. So The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco is basically one of the most recommended books in the historical fiction space. That's set during the Middle Ages, so I wanted to mention that. Also, the Pillars of the Earth series. Ivanhoe by Walter Scott. The Once and Future King by T.H. White. The Lost Kingdom by Bernard Cornwell and as i mentioned philippa gregory's novels so i think that's a lot of recommendations for this time period so let me move on to the early modern period which is between 1500 and 1760. okay so we are firmly into the tudor period here in terms of english history and i have a recommendation for that here which is of course a philippa gregory novel because i am a bit of a fangirl it is The Last Tudor by Philippa Gregory, which focuses on Lady Jane Grey's sister, Catherine. And she is basically the last Tudor, would you believe it? So another one of Philippa Gregory's very, very popular novels is The Other Boleyn Girl, which a lot of you will probably have heard of in this time period. It is obviously about Anne Boleyn's sister. And that book was made into a very, very famous film as well. So. I would recommend Philippa Gregory's novels for this time period as well. I do think they are, you know, there are debates around the accuracy of some of the events, but I particularly like her spin of history and I do kind of love how she explores the female kind of viewpoint. So I really would recommend Philippa Gregory as well. Another one to recommend is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This has recently been published, I believe this came out last year, and this focuses on Shakespeare's son. So of course, Shakespeare was a very, very prominent figure towards the end of the Elizabethan era into the Jacobean era, and this focuses on his son, Hamnet, which helped to inspire one of his most famous plays. So Hamnet is supposed to be absolutely breathtaking. I haven't read this one yet, but 
I've heard incredible things. It won Waterstones Book of the Year last year, and it's just supposed to be a literary marvel. Like, the reviews have been phenomenal. Maggie O'Farrell is a best-selling author, and I don't know how many books she's written in terms of historical fiction, but I'm just like really intrigued to read this. It's set during the 1590s and explores kind of the family dynamic of the Shakespeare family. So very intrigued to read this one. Another recommendation is Kate Moss's The Burning Chambers. So Kate Moss is a historical fiction novelist who wrote a very famous book called Labyrinth, which was set during the Middle Ages, I believe. And this is set a little bit later in the 1560s in France. This explores the wars of religion. It explores a Catholic woman who has a relationship with a Huguenot, I believe. I believe I'm saying that right, I might be wrong. And it pivots between Carcassonne and Toulouse. Kate Moss's Labyrinth was one of my favourite books and The Burning Chambers seeks to kind of just broaden out her writing style. If you're a fan of historical fiction and especially like historical mysteries, I would definitely check out Kate Moss's stories as they are beautifully written and just how look, look how lovely this hardback is. I am obsessed with it. So if you're looking for historical fiction that's not set in England, like the other books that I mentioned, this is set in France in the 1500s, which will hopefully give a bit of a different perspective and is a different take from the usual English monarchs that often dominate this time period in terms of historical fiction. And some other recommendations I quickly wanted to shout out were Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, one of the classics in terms of historical fiction. Obviously, Wolf Hall centres around Thomas Cromwell and his story it won the Booker Prize, as did its sequel, Bring Up the Bodies. I don't need to explain this to you. Basically, Wolf Hall is a big recommendation. If you've not yet read this, it kind of centers around the court of Henry VIII, and I would recommend. Also, Alison Weir's Six Queens series, which is a series that takes each of the brides of Henry VIII in turn and gives them their own story. It is a feminist kind of look at their stories and basically gives them a voice. So I really, really would recommend that series as well. And my final recommendation would be Dissolution by CJ Sansom. This is a historical mystery and focuses on the character of Matthew Shardlake. He gets embroiled with the dissolution of the monasteries and it is a fantastic look at the religion of the time and all the dramas to do with the dissolution of the monasteries. So segueing into my final category, which is around the Industrial Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars. So this lasts from 1760 to 1840. And I actually don't have any physical book recommendations to talk to you about from my collection. There is one that I've read and that is The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock, which I believe is set during the kind of late 1700s, early 1800s really would recommend that one. I thought that was fascinating. It blends in some magical realism with less straight historical fiction. But some other recommendations that I've gathered from the internet are War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. So I believe this isn't a contemporary novel from when Tolstoy was writing this. Obviously that is set in Russia. It is a Russian novel. So gets us out of England, you know? It gives a different point of view. Also, the Poldark series by Winston Graham. Poldark is a very successful TV show, and the Poldark books are set during the Industrial Revolution in Cornwall, and how the mining industry in particular kind of handles all that. And of course, the setting is beautiful in terms of the coastline of Cornwall, with all of its very dramatic backdrops and themes of smuggling, which was so rife at the time. Also, the Sharp novels by Bernard Cornwell have been recommended in terms of a key series to check out during this time as well, which I believe focuses on the Napoleonic Wars. So guys, that is the end of the recommendation segment. I do hope you really enjoyed these recommendations. And please do educate me in terms of other recommendations down in the comments below. I need all your book recommendations for all time periods, please. Leave them down in the comments below. And that is it for my A Beginner's Guide to Historical Fiction. Special shout out to The History Quill for kindly sponsoring a segment of this video. Please leave your recommendations in the comments below. Let me know if I've missed anything crucial out. And thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more bookish videos from me. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye.